Here we go guys, Golden Matte Acrylics, full review, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, hey Rosie. Uh, hey there hog, what you up to? Uh, 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 good, good Rosie, I'm just uh, doing the intro here for the nice lady. Let's toss it to the nice woman. Here you go. Welcome back to Bits of an Artist Life. This is Sandy and I am so excited to give this review of the Golden Matte Acrylic paints because spoiler alert i am loving 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 them and i want to tell you all about them i only have i think like one negative that i want to tell you about and i'll save that for the end hey guys i need to jump back on back on here because i totally forgot to tell you guys some of what we're doing in this video. I'm gonna be doing the review and then I'm also gonna be showing you some paintings in this video that in future vlogs, I'll be actually showing you the process and letting you see me paint and think through the process of it. But you'll get little glimpses of it in this video because I wanted you to be able to see some of what I've been painting and what this paint actually looks like on, you know, paper or canvas or whatever I'm painting on. That's what we're gonna be doing in this video. All right, back to the other Sandy. guys. These are some good paints. They'll definitely be something that I continue to buy. In fact, I already need to restock my colors because I am painting like a maniac with these paints because I love them. Let's just jump in and I'm gonna go down my notes list. Thoughts on golden matte acrylics. These are not in any specific order. First, I love the goopiness. There is a goopiness to the quality. So one of the things I do like about my flash paint is that it's thick but not too thick. I felt like it was the perfect consistency, but now I'm starting to question myself. I'm hoping that these pictures here are gonna help you see like what I mean. They are called fluid. So they are fluidy. I would call them goopy, that they have a goopiness to them. They're not sticky, but they're goopy. And it's the perfect goopiness amount. So they do like mix. I don't know, it's just nice on the palette. It's really, really nice. The color strength is great. I really can't tell much of a difference from my flash paints. In fact, some of the paintings that I've painted, there's times that I have to look on the back if I remember I write on the back what I used. And there's some of them that look to me like paint, like they're painted with my flash paint, which flash paint is a vinyl paint and it's matte. But these have a good vibrancy. I think one of the ways that you can tell if paint has an off oomph is pigment. That's the that's the professional because we're so professional here. That's the pro more professional way of describing it. What was it? I just said it and I've already forgotten it. Um, uh, what was it? I need to rewind the video. Anyways, I already said it. You know what I'm talking about. When you're after a certain color that you're mixing, whether it's an orange or a purple or a black, especially a black, you can get it easily and you don't get mud. I can mix gorgeous blacks. These are all the colors that I have right here and I can make a gorgeous black. So if you can get a nice dark, strong dark, whether it's black or something else, you know you've got some good pigmented paints and these are really good. One of the other things I like about them, they act a lot like my flash paints where they stay wet at the most appropriate time. Now I'm going to say this. I use a lot of paint. I have a lot of like puddles and paint puddles going on my palette. And then I also use a lot of paint on my surface, whatever surface I'm painting on. So they don't stay wet like oils for forever, but they stay wet long enough that you don't feel like you're wasting paint on your palette. I think that's one of the reasons I didn't like acrylics when I first started them, is that I felt like I was constantly like wasting paint because I'd, you know, mix it and go like this and just turn back and it was like everything was already dry. So it was like things just dried way too fast for me with acrylics. But with these, they stay wet long enough for, you know, if I'm over here painting for a while on the palette, they haven't all dried up. They stay nice and juicy and very workable for me. And then on the surface that I'm painting on also, they stay where I can get like soft edges if I want or blending, but then they dry fast enough. I can go have lunch or go get some coffee or go use the bathroom and then I can come back and rework them. To me, it's this nice in-between of like not super fast and not stay wet for forever like oils, but I can do some layers 
you know, do a nice background, like you've got a background going on that one, go have lunch and come back and it's dry and then I can start working again. And I can keep my palette wet by either covering it with like wet paper towel and some saran wrap or something and everything stays nice. It's not like, I feel like sometimes acrylic feels like it's like dying to just dry. Like it just can't wait. Like, oh please. But I don't feel like these are that anxious for drying. They're not like, they're like, well, we'll give you a minute. We'll let you do your thing and we'll be here waiting for you, Sandy. That's how I feel about them. Alrighty, let's go to the next point. They do have, I probably should put this down because I'm gonna be pointing to y'all. All right, they, let's just put those down. They do have a little bit of that acrylic drying color shift. Now, again, let me just say, I have not worked but like a hot minute years and years and years and years ago in acrylic. So I'm not like an acrylic expert. In fact, I would say I'm a non acrylic expert. What would be the opposite of acrylic expert? Anyway, you know what I mean? So I feel like acrylics have a pretty good shift. My flash paint, these, gouache, things like that, I feel like have a little shift. It's not like you come back and you're like, whoa, whoa, what in the world happened? You go, mm, yeah, I, I need to make that a little lighter. There's a little bit of that and I'm not necessarily seeing it in every color, I don't think. I don't feel like I'm doing a lot of like, great, I've got to repaint that because that didn't dry what I wanted. I'm not feeling like that. And I do remember feeling like that when I painted in acrylics a million years ago. So I just adjust it a little on my palette, then it's usually fine. But I also don't mind if it does dry different than what I think because I'm painting in layers. And so I do have a little bit of freedom of if I'm like, I, like I don't have to get it perfect the first time. And that's just the method of the way I'm painting right now that I don't feel anxious about that. I just put it down and know like, hey, if it's a little too dark, I'll just remix it and some of that darkness will stay through. I'll paint my next layer and no biggie. So if that's the way I'm painting right now, you may be like hot diggity. I need it to be right the first time. And so you'll just have to learn your paints. And when you work with just such a limited palette, you can do that so much faster than if you have 50 million colors. And let me tell you the colors that I did buy. I bought a white finally came in. If you guys have been watching my other videos, you know I've been waiting for like 500 years for my white to come in. While I was waiting for my white, I did order the Blick Matte Acrylic White. They come in good big bottles and they're really cheap. I think I got two bottles for like $7. If you watch my last video, I give the prices of everything. This is thicker. It's not, it doesn't have the fluid goopiness that this has. This has almost like a whipped, soft, almost like something you would put on the top of a dessert or cake. It's really nice. I don't really know how to explain it, but it does have this consistency of something that you would like to eat. I may prefer this over the white. I haven't painted enough in this. I've painted some. I mean, I do already need to reorder it. I may continue to go with this because one, I don't have to wait. This was so back ordered, the white. I waited for forever. But I didn't feel like a massive difference. So anyway, so this worked in the meantime. I got one yellow. I really like this yellow because though it does lean more to the warm side, because I usually get a cool and a warm of all my colors, it leaned more towards the warm, but it was enough in the middle of a cool and a warm that I like it. I don't know that I would buy another yellow. I think I'll just be happy with this one because I can add white to this and cool it down and add some red to it to warm it up, which is wonderful. But this is the Hansa Yellow Medium. I did get two reds. As you've heard me say in previous videos, I do like the kind of uh, red that you get that's kind of has more of a pink tone, but it's usually transparent. That's like your hard hitter, heavy lifter, the one that you're mainly going to mix with. And this one, it's called Quinecrodome Crimson. But then you do need a red red for when you need a red red. You know, if you're gonna paint red lipstick or I don't know, there's just certain times you need a red red. And this one is what I can't pronounce very well, but that's fine. Pyroline red. I'll let you read it for yourself and you can pronounce it how you want to say it. And I know you guys will often send like how to pronounce things correctly and I do appreciate it, but here's the thing. You need to just know that I will not remember it. I just don't have brain capacity to remember it. But it is nice of you to help me out and I do appreciate it, but. I won't remember. It just doesn't stick with me. My brain's not big enough. So there's that red. And then I got an ultramarine blue. I do need a, another blue, 
more of the cerulean kind of color to it because you just need that to be able to mix certain greens and just certain colors. So I'm gonna order, I haven't figured out which one I'm gonna get, but I'm gonna reorder, or not reorder, I'm gonna order one more blue, but I'm happy with that yellow, happy with the reds, happy with the blue. Okay, I have been putting them in, as if you saw in the last video, you know I'm making this face. I did put them in different containers because I like a wide opening so I can dip my brush in there. I did find out something interesting with my brushes. So in the last video, I also talked about brushes and that I've been using these Chinese brushes a whole lot. One that has more of a hog bristly type bristle and one that has a softer bristle. And my paintings recently have also been getting out my hog bristle brushes, like oil brushes and using them also. I found this really interesting. I don't know why. I'm sure there's a scientific reason. I don't know what that reason is. I just know that it's the case. And for some of you, what I'm about to say will not apply, but I'm just telling you because this is my review. I found that, you know how I like to double dip in my paints and contaminate them. I found that it does not transfer as much paint or get them as much dirt, you know, as transfery, dirty, contaminated. If I'm using my hog bristles, if I, or like the Chinese bristles. Chinese brushes, sorry. But if I'm using my oil painting hog bristle, it does transform, transfer more. I don't really know why, but there is that. I mean, not like it's, not like I'm gonna have to throw out my thing of paint or anything. I just wanted to mention that in case it was helpful for anybody. I think also should mention, because I made such a big deal about one of the paints that I got in my art haul in the last video. Whoa. <laughs> Holy smoke, that has a strong, <laughs> that has a strong smell. I did, you know, talk about the smell and I had like a little sniffing thing with my paint. These are not bothering me at all. I mean, if you stick your nose up in them, it's got a strong smell. But even when I'm like sitting down and painting, still don't notice the smell. And I'm very sensitive to smells. I have bad allergies and sinus stuff. I'm sensitive. All right, let's get to the one negative that I did have. I guess I kind of have two negatives, but I'll just wrap them all up into one because it has to do with the actual packaging. I really liked that other brand that I got and I like my flash paint, the way that they come in a big container. Now, it's not a big deal for me to put them in my own containers. That's fine. The other thing, this is the only, like this is the biggest size that they come in, this four fluid ounces, and I am going through them hot diggity fast. So I wish they came in bigger bottles. I mean, like the Blit does have a big bottle of the eight ounce. He has a double of the white. That's really my only negative. I mean, I will be repurchasing these. They are going to stay, I'm quite sure, on my whatever. And things only stay in my studio and I only reorder things that I love and use like crazy. I would say if you want to give them a try, give them a try and put them on your Christmas list for sure. So I've been painting quick little sketches with my flash paint of Maine. I've been going back to some old sketches. I think I mentioned this in my Instagram stories. Going back to some old sketches of Maine, and this is just a color note. So what I like to do sometimes is just sketch, but then I'll go through and make notes about what the colors look like. I'm pretty good at like color descriptions, which that drives Grady crazy. He'll be like, what color is this? I'm like, well, it's kind of like a maroonish with a little bit of yellow. And he's like, could you just tell me if it's red or yellow? I'm taking this and I've got a couple other paintings. Let me see where they are. Oh, this was not a painting, but a drawing I did with oil uh, wax pastels, like really cheap ones on that trip. I did this in my flash paint. I'm like flying through these, sorry guys. And I did this right here. I loved how this turned out. So I really loved how this sketch, I did it super fast. Just trying to make color notes and be loose because I'm not much of a like a landscape artist. And y'all saw this probably on Instagram. I've been doing some others from Maine. Just looking at my old sketches and paintings. So I've been having fun with this. So I think I wanna do this kind of thing. So this, and then I did this one. Well, I'm working on this one still. I'm probably gonna just leave this now that I look at this and then do a bigger version 
on this bigger piece of paper and use my new matte golden acrylics and see how that goes. I probably won't set the camera up. I may get the like whim and do that, but I really just want to focus on the experience of the paints. I will get back with you. I really hope I like them. I don't know why I feel like that because I have my flash paints and I love those. It's just fun to experiment with, experiment with new stuff. That's what it boils down to. That would be nice to have like a whole nother thing in my repertoire or whatever, you know what I mean? In my tools of things that I know how to do and enjoy using. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm so excited. It is so stinking fun to try new art supplies. So I'm just using my red or this like alizarin crimson kind of color that I'm using this brush. I just picked up whatever. I'm gonna really take advantage of like this long. I usually never paint in this kind of format. Is this vertical? Yeah, vertical, horizontal, vertical. And I've really have been enjoying doing skies. This is what I went with. Just really quick sketching it in. And now I'm gonna blop in color. And here's the deal. It should be like really easy because I'm just going with the primary. So I don't have to worry about muck. I don't even have to do like color charts to learn my colors because I already know what these types of colors do. So I'm gonna just really have fun laying in the color and I'll keep you updated. Guys, I don't want to get like too ahead of myself. I'm loving these paints so far. Let me just show you. I mean, I haven't done much. I'm just like blocking in and blopping down, but I'm loving the colors and it has dried some. I'm pretty happy. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I could get on here tomorrow and be like, I hate this stuff, but we'll see. I don't really know why I'm even showing y'all this because you can't really probably tell much. Okay, and I haven't done anything to up there. Ooh, I'm super happy. <sighs> yeah. Oh, I mean, I just love the experience when you love the supplies. It just makes a huge difference. Okay, and I'm just gonna tell y'all, let me just sit down because I gotta give y'all a little lecture. And I'm not gonna bother putting the tripod up, so sorry. It's gonna be a little wobbly. I wonder if I could set y'all on anything. Do I have anything? My studio is all like um, tidy still from the you know new studio tour makeover, and so I don't have anything just laying around to set y'all on. I guess I'll have to hold you up. Okay, listen people. I only bought three colors. Well, really four, right? With white, but I'm telling you what is so freeing if you have the, the correct three colors, the primaries, it just makes things so simple. So it's not just that you have those three. You have to know how to mix colors. You do have to like know the medium a little. Sometimes it does take a little bit of time to find that, oh, that blue is like really strong. I have to barely dip my brush in that. Or man, that yellow is kind of weak. I have to really dip deep. I'm able to paint something right now and not get mud. I'm not having to take time to like, you know, I bought all these colors and now I'm having to learn them. I just wonder how many people get stuck with painting and don't like what they have what the way a painting turns out i wonder how much of it could be related to the fact that you have too many colors and you don't have the right colors you're not taking the time to learn what your paints do and how to just mix like right now i can jump straight into literally a painting that i could sell i, I haven't finished it yet but i'm just saying i think it's going to turn out good and probably be one that i put up on my wall i know with these three colors I'm gonna be safe, like I can mix stuff. It's just really freeing. Yes, it's fun to have 50 million colors, I get that. But you have to be skilled. You have to know what those colors do and you really can't mix much. Now maybe you don't like to mix, but you're really freer if you learn how to just mix those three colors. Every color on, my, on this painting will probably, I'm shaking y'all like crazy, I'm so sorry. I'm like thinking and talking so I'm not even paying attention to the camera. Mm. It's really worth, just get your three colors, 
get a yellow that is like a good, if you only have a choice between more like a really cad warm yellow or a lemony yellow. So the cad's gonna be more like a sunny, rich yellow. The lemon is gonna look like a lemon, more warm, uh, more cool. Get your alizarin and crimson kind of color. So it's always gonna be like a pinky. It's gonna be transparent. And then like either a cobalt or ultramarine blue. I think this one was ultramarine. Yeah, ultramarine. It's like the perfect blue. Oh, it's just fun. Would you try, you know how many times I feel like sometimes I'm begging y'all, just trust me, just trust me. I would be tempted if I like had all the money in the world or even just not all the money in the world, but just like, let's say it was like a birthday gift and I had a, a gift card or somebody, you know, Grady wanted to buy me a bunch, I would probably pick a bunch of colors, but I'm so glad that I'm a tightwad because this kept me to just buying the three colors and I'm loving the colors that's coming out of these three. And then here's the other thing, it just makes the painting cohesive, like everything works together. Together. It's like a song and everything's in tune. It all sings together. It just works. I just wonder how many of you guys may be using too many colors, whether it's watercolor, or gouache, whatever you're using. I just wonder. I gotta stop wondering though, because I gotta get back to painting. And I just uploaded the studio vlog, and y'all will probably leave me comments and I want to go respond to y'all. But I'm thinking about this painting back there. I'm really having fun with it. I'm gonna get back to it. I'll keep you up to date. I'll keep you up to date. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I love the little edge too. I did rip the paper some. It was not the best tape to use. But guys, I'm loving this paint. A week from today that I'm filming this, it will be Thanksgiving. And I just want to tell you guys that I am thankful for you guys. It has been a blast to do this with you guys this year. You guys have kept me like painting more, have helped me grow as a teacher. I just can't imagine not doing this. I just love it so much. And you guys have been just like crazy, over the moon kind to me this year. So I thank you for your engagement, your comments, your questions, laughing with me, coming and being a little fly in my studio this year, in my studio this year, but like the good kind of fly. Not the bad kind that I want to like swat at and get out of here. I want you to stay. All right, guys. So that's it. Happy Thanksgiving. I will see you real soon. Bye, guys. Would you like to get some like coffee later or something, Rosie? Um, no, probably not. I'm, I'm uh, pretty busy today. Sorry about that. I'll see you later.